I now call to order the emergency meeting of the Board of Commissions of the City of Tarpa Springs on March 12, 2020 at 7 p.m. Uh, if you please, roll call, please. Mayor Lahousis? Here. Vice Mayor Terrapini? Here. Commissioner Sieber? Here. Commissioner Carr? Here. Commissioner Donovan? Here. Thank you. First, I want to thank everyone for being here, for attending this emergency meeting tonight. Um, and before we go to the uh, commission comments, I'd like to turn it over to Mark Lacouris, our city manager. Yes, the, as you know, as everybody's been seeing and reading um, about the coronavirus, um, us as a city, we've probably been, been working uh, through the county. It's pretty much when emergency management works, the whole county gets together. Um, everybody in the city, we've been on conference calls and, and waiting and, and watching this thing. The county very early set up the sites um, for people to get information on, did all that, and we were sitting and waiting um, because we knew from the very start and we had prepared ourselves from the very start for this situation to change in a, in a moment. Um, and I can tell you, as I was watching basketball and saw what happened last night, I said right then, in fact, I was on the phone talking with one of the other city managers and we were talking about things coming up and I had told him the dominoes are going to start rolling tomorrow after this cancellation, you're going to see the domino effect and it's going to move very fast. And that's why you see a lot of cities today and tomorrow are going to be acting fast um, to deal with this changing situation. Obvious, the biggest item of attention that we've got and why we had to hurry and have this meeting and not give more notice. We tried to give, you know, more than five hours notice and stuff. But, of course, our situation here is the fact that one of our biggest events of the year, the, the arts and crafts show, is, is starting. The people will be coming in tomorrow and, of course, through the weekend. Um, um, as we were watching this morning, and again, we were in meetings all morning. We were getting ready for the different scenarios and what we needed to do, um, waiting to see what the situation was. I think when the governor, and in your backup for item one, you see when the governor came out and encouraged all cities and counties to, to postpone events for 30 days, I think that was the call of action. Us, the, the county and the emergency thing needed to go into action, especially those places. As you know, March is a time for events all over the place. I mean, there's, there's plenty of events in this Tampa Bay area to go on the weekends, but the urgency is that event coming up. So that is why um, in item one, we're recommending that as far as all special events um, be suspended, postponed for a period of 30 days starting tomorrow so we can give proper notification tonight for the Arts and Crafts Show. Obviously, we've got a Greek Independence Day um, next week that we're worried about a short notice, but I know the mayor's got some information. They already, they already took action before they beat us to come into the board with taking actions themselves um, for their event scene that going. Um, so you got a list of the ones we did. We are, we are planning and, and what I'm asking, a lot of these things, some of these things I could do myself and my powers as city manager. Obviously the events were approved by you at a meeting. Those are improved special events. So they're coming to you for those, but I'm also adding in here um, for your discussion if you wanna do something that's under my purview. And I'm also have putting that towards any city events um, the one that is not on your list is the extravaganza. I think the first week of April, it'll affect that at, at the uh, sports complex, but it includes performances, performances building, and we do have a sold out show Saturday for the Jimmy Buffett thing, but that is a big crowd that'll fill this building. And again, you know, that'll be, that'll be problematic. So, so I'm including in here, um, you know, all performances and that. Now we'll, this is not the, this is not the end of what we'll have to do and look at. Um, and we'll talk a little bit probably about that in item two, some discussion items, some other decisions that we have to make. We have to make some decisions on things we go, have going on at the rec center, whether it be leagues or something. Again, that's something I can deal with. Um, we've already alerted the sports league. We're gonna have to decide what we're doing with uh, the soccer and little league baseball. We're kind of giving them a chance because we know with the dynamics going today, they're probably meeting with their boards and stuff about games and what are they doing about games. Hopefully tomorrow, they'll learn enough what their leagues and stuff say, but I'll pro we'll probably be dealing with that tomorrow about what we do with the, the two major sports leagues that are going on of youth and their youth soccer and, and little league baseball. Um, 
And there'll be a lot of us, other issues going on. Most of them I can handle within my powers and, of course, keep you notified of them. But the one action that we have to do in one tonight because of the granting of these, a lot of these are special events. Some of them are city events. They're easy to cancel. The concert tonight was very easy. That's a city event. Um, that was the first thing done immediately. But, uh, you know, I'd ask you to follow what the governor said and what you're going to see instituted probably throughout the state of Florida and the suspension of these t of t events and uh, performance within the city for a 30-day period. Um, I envision that with the way this thing and dynamics are changing fast on this, that we'll be dealing with this item at the 24th City Commission meeting. We'll be update. We'll see where we are and if we have to make any other changes, if we're th looking at the need for an extension or something, we can deal with it the 24th. Obviously, with what's going on, we have to deal with this tonight, but I envision an item on your 24th agenda that will talk about continued efforts or something else that we have to do it there. So the first item is the, the 30 days on the events and performances. Mr. Lucas, thank you. And also want to thank you for uh, all day. You've been on the forum talking to different people, the state, the other county, and also uh, our fire chief, uh, Young, uh, here he is. He has been representing us uh, at the county. Uh, <clears throat> like um, uh, Mark Likuda said, after 30 days, we will reassess the situation and see what we have to do. But even before that daily, we'll be, in, we'll go, we'll be monitor the recommendations of the state and the, uh, the county. Uh, it's gonna be a very, very difficult decision because uh, like um, <clears throat> the event of uh, the, f uh, the Fine Arts Festival, this is something that we'll be waiting all year. Uh, the Chamber of Commerce has been waiting for that. The local business is waiting for that. But we have to remember that our main responsibility as elected officials is the safety and the welfare of the people. That's beyond and above every, every uh, event that we have in Tarpa Springs. So I hope you all understand because that's going to be my position. Uh, uh, earlier today, and um, I spoke to Mr. Sisois, who he is down at the audience there, and he advised me that uh, the Greek community decided to cancel the, uh, uh, the Greek Independence Parade. Also, they're going to cancel the uh, event that they had the night before. Uh, we didn't have to ask them. They actually they came to us and said, don't worry about it. I understand what situation you're in, and we're going to have it done. So I want to thank them for doing that. Uh, like Mr. Likura says, other events like uh, uh, the, uh, the concert on the uh, Sunset Beach, that was easy to handle. But the main thing that we need to talk about is the, uh, uh, the Fine Arts Festival. And I know it's going to be difficult, but just think of it. If we have a hurricane, we would uh, cancel that or reschedule it to another day. So in my, my uh, position on that is the safety of the people first. Vice Mayor Terpin. Thank you, Mayor. Thanks, uh, everybody, for being here tonight on this emergency uh, <coughs> meeting. Um, you know, I, th I think it's, all, it's safe to say that we've all been watching the uh, effects of the coronavirus and as it spreads throughout the, the world and country. Um, you know, it's one of those things where you've kind of got to watch and take a position day by day to see what develops and the severity of the situation. Um, I can tell you on a personal level, uh, I was set to go to uh, Lake Tahoe today with my family for uh, spring break, and unfortunately last night about 10 o'clock at night we pulled the plug on that for, you know, reasons which we'll discuss tonight um, in terms of, you know, public safety and just the, our overall uh, well-being as, you know, a family but also as a broader community. Um, you know, I think I, I would be the first to recognize the economic, uh, positive economic impacts that special events, especially scheduled special events, have uh, within the community. You know, not just economic, but also the intangible benefits that it brings to our residents and having something, you know, to do and look forward to. Um, you know, that said, as it relates to the possible rescheduling of events, um, you know, I think that's important for us to recognize that if we do cancel our upcoming events, that we will have an opportunity to reschedule. Um, and I think it's probably important for us as a city, especially as our, uh, in terms of our bigger events that we look forward to annually, um, in terms of re-advertising costs and some of the costs associated with, uh, you know, rescheduling these events, I would look to my colleagues to see if, you know, we could find a few dollars here and there to try and help with, you know, some of the costs associated with re-advertising. So, excuse me. So that's something that I think is important to discuss tonight. I know it's hard to commit to a number, especially, you know, with not knowing what that might be. 
but I think we'll you know, commit to you wholeheartedly that we'll do whatever we can uh, in terms of seeing these events um, take place one way or the other. So um, my position is, you know, first and foremost, public safety. Obviously, a lot of people come to this event from around the area, and I think you'll continue to see as the hours progress tonight, tomorrow, through the weekend, uh, more cases pop up around us. So <coughs> please, uh, you know, bear with us. We're trying to do the best we can. So we'll see what shakes out. Thank you. Commissioner Siebel. Uh, yes. Uh, one thing I wanted to say is uh, we don't all sit at our computers during the day, so uh, I didn't know until pretty late today that we were having this. I'd appreciate maybe a phone call or a text or something uh, so I could be prepared to be here. Um, the safety of our residents, of course, is important uh, and crucial, um, and, and that's our job to protect our residents. My question, though, is where do we stop? Um, the elderly and the people compromised have been asked to stay at home. Um, I feel like for this event, they probably will, for any other big events. Um, if we cancel these events, where are we gonna stop? I see that the city of Dunedin uh, is canceling their commission meetings, but not their events. Um, I, I just I worry about that, uh, especially since this is March this is our biggest month of, of the year. It's going to affect our businesses. Obviously, it already is affecting our businesses. Um, but should we close City Hall? Should we close the library where a lot of people go to the library and, and touch surfaces? Uh, should we um, not go to the polls next Tuesday? Uh, that's that's it's going to be a lot of people there, and there are a lot of outsiders or out-of-towners uh, here right now. Uh, should realtors stop showing houses and stop having open houses? Because again, there's some uh, snowbirds here looking at houses and, and they could be bringing the virus uh, to the house or the person in the house could be sick. Um, so I understand what we're saying about safety, um, but where do we stop? I mean, should we maybe look at this uh, as an ongoing thing before we cancel all events for the next 30 days? Should we consider again, the Chamber of Commerce, um, the viability. Um, not only advertising is spent for, but putting up the fencing, uh, doing all the things that you've already done and, and spent the money on, and then having to re refund all the artists. Uh, how are you gonna overcome that, and where will you get the help for that? Uh, that is something that uh, Commissioner Terrapani brought up, and I think of that as well. So, um, I, you know, again, I feel that we should be responsible for our residents, but we have to be wise about it. And uh, I, I'm not in favor of canceling it. And I think we should look at all these other events, event by event, as the dates co come closer. Commissioner Gore. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, <coughs> thank you all for coming out tonight. And Mayor and uh, City Manager, thanks for putting this meeting together at short notice. Um, I'm not a health expert in any regard, but I do see the recommendation that came from the governor that talked about, um, I'm recommending local municipalities and private entities to strongly consider limiting and postponing mass gatherings in the state of Florida. DeSantis said, this is an opportunity for our health officials, um, this, is, this is an opportunity health <coughs> officials believe where some of these large scale events can be postponed and due to, a, um, due to it later. So with that statement, um, it's tough to hear, absolutely it's tough to hear, um, especially with the amount of small businesses that we have in Tarpon Springs. Um, overall, I think the mayor and the vice mayor said, some, uh, said it very well. Um, it, postponing these events really, I think, is a prudent thing to do um, in this aspect. Uh, it's not a fun thing to say, let's go ahead and postpone these. But at the same time, I think it's a, a health issue that we haven't seen in America um, in my lifetime, that's for sure. Um, and many, many years before that. So um, with that, I think we, des we owe it to our residents. We owe it to, um, we owe it to our, just everyone that's here that's called Tarpon Springs home. Um, I know Tarpon Springs is definitely the greatest city within the Tampa Bay area, and we have so many special events that are planned. When I look at all these, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, uh, 12 different events that are going on within the city over the next month. And it just shows you there's a lot going on in the city and it's a great city to live in. It's a great city to call home. It's a great city to, to raise a family and retire in. 
uh, with that, we still want to make it a great city, and we're gonna. I want to be a leader that stands up and says, you know what, all those are there's really a big issue going on with the rest of the state. We do want to protect everyone the best we can, no matter what. And if it's going to say, are you gonna put money first or people's health first? I'm gonna say I'm gonna put someone's health first above all. That's for sure. Um, so with that, I know we have a lot of people talking or here tonight. I'm sure you want to share some of your concerns, either for or against it. But um, thank you all for being here. Thank you, Commissioner Dunhill. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, thank you, thank you everybody for coming out tonight, and thanks to everybody that holds a special event. I mean, I, I really think those are part of what makes Tarpon Springs so special. Uh, but really what we want, especially in the coming days, is information and education, not panic or fear. So really the CDC, if you go online, has put together a pretty comprehensive list of the to-dos and not to-dos that's accurate. You know, the virus is thought to spread mainly from person to person between people who are in close contact with one another, thought to be about within six feet, um, and then from coughing or sneezing from infected people. Um, I know a lot of these special events would definitely constitute mass gatherings uh, that the governor mentioned, but to me, what it comes down to is protecting our residents. And I just don't feel comfortable focusing on profit or money in a time when people are dying. So I think it's imperative that not only do we seek to protect our residents immediately, but also spread out useful information for them in the future and in the coming days and keep them updated. Um, but with that, I'm looking forward to hearing the public comments. Yeah, could I just add something? Uh, Commissioner Carr, you said postponing these events. We're talking about canceling them, not postponing them. So there's a difference there. Um, and again, I do care about the safety, but I also think we need to educate ourselves. Um, <coughs> there's a lot of stuff going on out there, and, and media is, is, is really on this. Um, but we, we do. We need to educate ourselves. Uh, Visit Florida uh, put out a, an email today uh, saying that they're closely watching this. Um, the U.S. Centers for uh, Disease Control has recommended those at higher risk of getting sick uh, from the virus, including the elderly and those underlying conditions, should take simple precautions like avoiding crowd, crowds, cruises, travel, non-essential air travel. The CDC has not recommended a blanket limit on domestic travel for the general population at this time. Visit Florida continues to market the state and ensure that travelers know Florida is open for business and ready to welcome visitors. Um, they also have put up a banner, uh, you know, in reference to COVID-19, uh, but they have made a decision to continue trying to get our tourists here because this is very important to our economy. Uh, not only the business owners, but everybody who works for those businesses could be losing their jobs. Uh, and, and this is not something easy um, to just decide. Um, we could start closing corporations. Uh, like I said, closing City Hall, closing the library, closing the beaches, where are there are more people than at the beaches right now um, at this time in March and with spring break starting. Um, so I, I just want everybody to, to realize that education is important and um, this could have a big impact on all of us. Thank you. I just want to clarify something that uh, <coughs> Commission Sieber said that uh, we're going to cancel that, not to postpone. If you look at item one on the agenda, it does say postpone. Oh, sorry. It's on there. Uh, but the thing is, of course, we're going to postpone it. Whatever days will become available in the future, we're always going to support, as we always have been, supporting our business community and our uh, different organizations to, uh, to have the different events. It's not that we don't want to have uh, different groups to have the events. It's we have a situation here that it's a safety issue. Vice Mayor, did you? I just wanted to uh, bring something up for some consideration in terms of the postponement of some of these events. Um, I do think that it's important for the city to maintain open for business, especially as it relates to like uh, essential personnel. And I think it's important for us to s maintain our scheduled BOC meeting on the 24th of this month. And if you look at the scheduled events, if we use that as a benchmark and say, okay, let's you know postpone the events up until that date, and then on the 24th, you know, take a take a look at. I mean, God willing, you know, things calm down, the virus doesn't continue to spread, et cetera. But if you use that uh, BOC meeting on the 24th as a benchmark, um, it really only postpones 
four events immediately and then would still give four days notice um, for the next event uh, that's scheduled. So, you know, just for some consideration as we discuss this, if we wanted to, you know, not postpone for 30 days, but postpone for a couple weeks when we already have a scheduled event or a scheduled Board of Commissioners meeting on the 24th. And like I said, you know, God willing, things uh, don't get worse and we can not not schedule the full 30 day or not uh, postpone the full 30 days but just a couple weeks and then take a look at it on the 24th yeah. um i will feel more comfortable if we monitor the situation and see what we have instead of just say the 24th is it a good day no one knows i, I, mean, I agree I, nobody knows and i don't want to have our community our city in in danger because we think the 24th might be a good day you know with all with all the respect Let's just stay with what we are uh, for the 30 days, and then uh, the, the city manager with us. Let's monitor the situation, and let's do that. I don't want to say the 24th is it a good day. It may be not. Maybe. I only use that as a benchmark you know because I mean? we have a meeting yeah. that day. So, I mean, obviously, we're going to monitor yes. in between now and then. Correct. And if things get better, at least yeah. we won't have right. postponed the full so 30 days. Let's just not say the 24th. We monitor daily and see where we're at. See what kind of uh, recommendations we're going to get from the state and from the county, and that way we make decisions here in Tarver Springs where we, what's the right thing to do. Let's not leave ourselves closed. So like you're, you're, you want to postpone for 30 days every scheduled event or take it day by day? Yeah, to go for 30 days and then day and monitor every day and see where we're at based on the, uh, communi you know, based on the uh, um, recommendations that we get from the state and from the county. That would be my, uh, okay. yeah. Just one thing, for example, I noticed an event that is not on here, and it'd be one event that they'd probably want to know ahead. I don't think, we, for some reason, we don't have the Arts and Crafts Festival at the Sponge Docks, which I believe is the first weekend of April and stuff. I'm sure they'd rather, that's one event that's an example of, they'd rather know now to cancel the vendors and everybody, they got to come in from everywhere. Um, obviously, you could do that, but they just have to know if things don't change that uh, it would happen, but that's, that's one missing from this list that I mentioned before, the extravagant, but of course that's a, that's a city event, so that's easy um, on there. So I just want to mention, I just noticed that, that uh, the event at the Sponge Docks Arts and Craft thing, of course, again, a lot of people for this festival this weekend aren't going to be noted. Probably some of them are traveling now and stuff, but that one at least they could give them a notice. Um, and I don't think there's going to be anywhere else to go because the festivals and art festivals are canceling throughout the state. So I don't think there's going to be any other ones for them to go to because they're all canceling. Yeah, I think that's the way to go. Let's just go for the 30 days. But Mr. Lequeris, it will be monitor the situation based on the recommendations we get, and we go from there. My only, my only thinking with that, Mayor, is then if you if you postpone, if you go ahead and say, okay, we're postponing for 30 days, then you can't go back. So my thinking is is if we are going to monitor it, mm -hmm. which we are, and we are, let's just say, going to continue to have a scheduled BOC meeting to handle you know the business i mean obviously the public doesn't have to come to that but i think it's important we still manage well, the business of the city yeah i'm not concerned about the uh, the boc meeting right. just because we have everybody can watch it on tv can watch it online right you know of course they're not going to be here to provide their uh, you know their comments and their recommendations which is so important to us but at least we can have it and people can be informed what's going on you know i'd rather we be in danger than other people sure, me too. you know Car. Thanks, Mayor. Um, I, I do, I mean, I, I do have, I think Vice Mayor has some validity um, just to like say what's postpone anything that's in the month of March. And then on the 24th of, Mar 24th of March, when we come back and reconvene for a regular board session, mm -hmm. let's look at the items that are scheduled for the first week and second week of April to see if it's something that, if it's still going and progressing in the way that everybody's expecting it to. Um, at that point, do we then postpone at that point? So anything in March that's remaining, I would say for sure you would want to postpone, but, but then because you wouldn't want to want to wait for like the 28th of March or the 29th of March for those events to postpone on the 24th, in my opinion. Um, I think it would make sense to do anything in March. And then since we do have a regular meeting, we could just have it as one of the first agenda items to say, um, you know, it has progressed and the, the governor is actually recommending even further postponement then we can make a decision or, you know, it's actually receded um, and it's calmed down. So we can go ahead as is for the month of April. 
Um, but I do understand a notice as well to the event planners that they have time to do what they need to do. But I think it, it still gives them about a week in advance at least. Um, and that, I mean, I understand it both ways. So, I mean, I would be happy to support it um, to make a decision on the 24th of the month of April. Okay. Any other comments? Any other commission comments? Commission Donovan? Yeah, I think that's a good middle ground. I think if we, if we shot for the 24th, you know, obviously everything in March canceled. And then on the 24th, we can make those decisions about those events. But I think it'd also be prudent to warn those events and say, hey, maybe you want to cancel it on your own. We're going to monitor the situation. It's not pending cancellation, but it's something that we're going to look into on the 24th. And then they can decide from there whether or not they want to continue with it. And I guess it, I, we, we have all used the word cancel, but it is postponing it. So yeah. they could come back along and we could have these events still happen again at a later time in the year. Okay. We are now going to the public comments. If you have any comments, please come to the podium and state your name and your address for the record. <laughs> uh, David Bolton, 508 North Gross Avenue, Tarpon Springs, Florida. So I don't envy you guys and the decisions that you have to make. Um, in the chamber, it's very difficult for them because this is a huge event. Um, the vendors for this event, it's not one vendor coming and then postponing and not one vendor comes back. These are, uh, this is a, the, one of the largest juried shows in the country and people are coming from all over the country. That being said, um, it's also safety first, so I, I'm not um, naive that canceling this, uh, postponing it is not almost the same thing as canceling um, because these vendors have their year schedule and they may not make it back. Um, and I think it's very unfortunate, but I do think probably the prudent thing to do for safety of the public is to cancel it. I wish that the chamber and the city had been more forthright and earlier on their websites and stuff saying we're going to have it but we're putting in extra hand washing stations we're putting in extra sanitation we've got a chip reader so you don't have to use cash to get in we'll just do the chip reader and and try and make the event safer so that we could feel more comfortable maybe continuing with it but since none of that happened i think we're left in a very difficult situation. Other, also, the letter that went out to the city staff and employees today stated that the staff should stay away from large events um, and not go to large events, but yet that we'd still have the art show, or that they were expecting to still have the art show at that time. So that seemed like a, a contradiction that we were telling them to stay out of big events, but yet kind of force some of these staff people to be in a dangerous situation, our police and other people that we may need should this event um, happen like some other bureaus in New York and stuff. So I don't envy the decision you have to make and I support you guys with whatever you say, but I think communication is very important right now to the public and um, thank you guys. Thank you. Chrissy Kladak is 221 Shaddock Street. I am here tonight speaking in protest of Tarpon Springs holding its annual Arts and Crafts Festival this weekend at Craig Park. I say this with a heavy heart because this festival has become a family tradition for us for almost 40 years. Every year we would all come together as a family, parking cars on my parents' vacant lot one block away from the park. We've always enjoyed seeing the different artwork and feeling the energy. I'm sorry, I'm nervous. It was a time of filotimo for us, for our community, and for those that visited Tarpon Springs. We were always eager to send them to the sponge docks as they walked to their cars after the festival to make sure they got their dose of Greek culture. Because we've always been so proud of our town, this is something special for us. But this year is different. It's so different that the entire world is shutting down events. Facilities and festivals across the country are being postponed. President Trump gave a speech from the Oval Office last night urging everyone to be vigilant and to avoid coming together in groups. The reason for this is not so much the virus, but for the grander ramifications that it will cause our communities and country as a whole. The way I understand it is this. It's not an airborne virus. It is transmitted through the eyes, nose, and mouth. So what if unknowingly a worker cooking at the festival cooked your food, has contacted the virus from someone else and traveled to our town of Tarpon Springs, then hand you the meal just as he prepared it. It could be on the plate, on the food, or on his hands as you touched it. 
You eat it not knowing you just came in contact with it. Then you started to feel the symptoms and you go to our local hospital. They test you and determine you, in fact, do have the virus. So you're quarantined along with approximately 36 healthcare workers because the statistics show that for every one patient infected, approximately 36 nurses, doctors, and aides must also be quarantined to ensure they did not contract the virus to further infect others. Imagine then if you get sick from something unrelated to the coronavirus and you go to the hospital, aside from the fact that you could potentially transmit the virus there, you are unable to see a healthcare professional because it, half of them are quarantined and tremendously understaffed. These are only a few examples of what could happen. I am aware that you will not be able to avoid the virus reaching us, but I'm pleading to you tonight to postpone the art festival to a future date to protect the health, safety, and welfare of the residents of Tarpon Springs. Also, as of, t as of typing this note, I have received notification on my phone that Disneyland and Disney World will be closed for the rest of the month. Broadway is shutting its doors until April 13th. The NBA, the NFL, the M have ceased playing and the NCAA have canceled its March Madness. As elected officials, I'm confident you will do the right thing and protect the citizens of Tarpon Springs and postpone the Art Festival planned for this weekend. And I also have one comment. I have been calling all, all the departments today in City of Park because I'm really concerned about my mother because she sits out there and parks the cars and she's one of the most vulnerable ones. And she's been a, a resident of Tarpon Springs since 1973, 1960. <laughs> and so I'm concerned that she might come in contact with it. And so when I called the city chamber office, I spoke with, I believe his name was Jake. I'm not sure who Jake is, but what he told me, and I said, and he, I told him, I said, are you comfortable bringing this festival here and possibly spreading it to our community? Let it happen organically if it happens. And he said, well, then just don't come. <laughs> that was the response I got, and I felt very disrespected because I'm actually looking for it as a whole. And I agree, Mr. Alahuzos, you know, postpone it. I love the art festival. It's something very special to all of us. You know, I, I really do love it, but I'm concerned that there's a health risk. It's a pandemic. Italy shut down. They shut everything down. They have 12,000 cases. President, I, it's not a joke, and I just hope that um, y'all hear my plea. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Harriet Kladakis. I'm the mama. <laughs> I, I like the comment that Mr. Carr made. People come first, then money. And some of you commissioners said that too. It's not important, the money. If something happens to me, I give it on to pass it on to somebody else. And what happened? Then I'll turn around and sue the city. Because we had a chance, the, the president, the, the state uh, representative told us not to. There's already one case in Pasco County. What if a person comes here? I think we should postpone it. Money is not everything. Leave the gates or the fences, whatever. Nobody's going to mess with them. Leave it for a month. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hello, folks. Rick Butcher, 1307 Ironworks Lane. I'm not advocating for or against anything. I'm just here to say that Commissioner Siebert was right. We need real numbers. We don't need hysteria. We need real numbers. How many cases, how many of this, you know, as opposed to just everybody flying off the handle and throwing out all kind of crazy numbers. So as you all know, I, I've spent four decades in public safety, and I'm still connected with the state working public safety. So all I'm asking is let's get real numbers, let's get the facts before a decision for or against. I'm not, everybody knows I've been working this show forever, but public safety is most important, the safety of our folks, definitely. But I do say that let's get real numbers first. Let's not go off half cocked, let's get the real numbers. Chief Young, I don't know if you are, uh, have any of the numbers, but I would like to hear you know, what did happen at the county level. Mayor, you alluded earlier that Chief Young was representing the city at the, you know, county EM. So, Chief, I don't know if you're able to an answer any of the questions with the real numbers, but I'd like to hear the real numbers, that's all. Thank you for your comments. Good 
good, good evening. I apologize for my voice. No problem. My name is Kostas Sisois. I'm the president for the Greek Debates Parade, and also uh, I was the president from the St. Nicholas Church. So we're talking about now about the safety. I disagree with the whole respect of the commissioners. I don't think so 12 days is enough to make the decision about the people because the next week, the next month, we have the procession about the Holy Week in the church. The Good Friday, we got about four or 5,000 people around. Also, the Good Saturday, we got another five, 6,000 people going around to the church. So the thing is, if we're talking about safety, we got to be safe to our families, to our community, and to our kids. So you think about them, I don't think there's enough time do you think about, I understand about the business because the Greek Tibetan Day, we got about $100,000 budget because we bring from Greece the Navy band and we cancel. And the Epsons, we cancel. Figure out about 60 tickets, the travels and motels and this kind of stuff. So we don't care about the money. We don't care right now about the business. We care about the health to our community. So think about them. I don't think there's enough the decision to you discuss again the, the March 24, if you give it extension about to open the events or not. That's what I gotta say. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Rich Lundahl, <clears throat> 22 North Safford Avenue. I'm a uh, business owner. <clears throat> in Tarpon Springs. I'm also, uh, full disclosure, I'm on the executive board for the chamber. Um, with all due respect, I don't think it is one or the other. I don't think it's health versus economic um, impact in our county, uh, in our city. Uh, this is a great city. I know everybody feels the same way. It's a great event. Uh, we want to have the event. Um, unfortunately, postponing it with all the, all the artists and uh, vendors, it probably is not going to happen. I also firmly believe that uh, in a month, it's not going to be any better. It's, there's going to be more cases down the road. Um, but when I, when I say that we, should, that we don't have to have one or the other, the economic impact for the city versus the health, you know, we've been doing this a long time, and uh, the event organizers really do the best that they can in making sure everybody is safe, okay? Um, what I would like the city commissioners today and the mayor to think about is standing up and making a statement uh, not to spread fear because that's what's going on right now. There's an incredible amount of fear that's being um, propagated out there. And a lot of it is with misinformation, okay? And, uh, you know, we had a great first Friday just last week, and we had thousands and thousands of people here. And uh, those are the kind of economic impacts that bring a great uh, pride to this city and great uh, revenue to small business owners, which is, by, by the way, the, the lifeblood of, of this city. And uh, we know you support uh, the small business owners. But going forward, um, making a decision to give some notice for an event like this canceling. We have um, artists and vendors and everybody already on their way here tomorrow. Uh, again, based on your decision, um, I know there's going to be a lot of disappointed folks, but that's not a reason to make that decision. A reason to make a decision to, to uh, move forward with this would be a reason to stand up and not uh, promote this idea of fear that's out there. Um, there's a lot of information. We listened in a rotary meeting today to a doctor that uh, gave us the facts. And uh, there's, again, a lot of information that's out there today that is not factual. And it, it would be certainly easy to say, well, we should just cancel things for the next three months. Um, our school, our school children are still going to school. Um, there's still things that are happening in our community that um, are, are going to happen uh, regardless of the um, health and welfare of, of what's going on in this city. So I'd, I'd like to please implore you to consider the impact of that and your statement that you're saying um, with uh, canceling this event. I'd certainly like to see it um, 
go this weekend. I, I don't want anybody to be sick, and I certainly don't want you to be scared about what's going on. Excuse me, ma'am, ma'am, please. Yeah, <clears throat> and, and again, there are lots of viruses out there, and our, our, our residents that are most at risk should be the ones that do, in fact, stay home and uh, shouldn't go out to an event where they could c come in contact with, uh, with folks. But again, um, I'm sure if we had the Arts Festival this weekend, the uh, population would be down. We wouldn't have as large a crowd because of the concern and the fear that's going around. But again, I would ask you as uh, public leaders in this city to set a precedent and stand up and make sure that we focus on the facts of uh, when people are gonna possibly get sick uh, we can't prevent this from spreading. It's going to it's going to spread, um, and uh, it, it's important that we stand up and make that statement. So again, thank you. I know it's a difficult decision for all of you, and uh, I certainly respect uh, your decision on what to do. Thank you. Mike Eisner, 1515 Riverside Drive. Um, I don't envy your decision. I've been listening to what you've been saying. And uh, one of the beauties of being retired is I get to listen to a lot of um, stuff on TV during the day. And uh, if anybody here would be able to tell me that by canceling this or canceling anything else, would that give us any sort of guarantee that Tarpon Springs wouldn't get affected by this. I would love to hear that because there is no guarantee. I've listened to our President Trump. I've listened to leaders from all over and every single person I've listened to doesn't have literally a clue. And within an hour, they've changed what they said an hour ago. So um, I'm not advocating for having a situation where we uh, accelerate a pandemic. I, I'm with everybody that, that speaks about safety for the community, but this is also an outdoor event. Um, I have no iron in the fire with this event. Um, I just don't see by canceling something that we're going to save anybody. Um, I've listened to my fellow um, town people speak about if somebody's in a situation where their health isn't good, they shouldn't be doing anything. They shouldn't handle money. Um, you know, I, I read something today that some of the, and I, and I don't mean to be funny, but some of the toilet paper that's being made is contaminated. It's, it's a paper product. Paper holds bacteria. So do we not use that? You, do we not use paper towels? Where do you draw the line is what I've heard. Uh, I don't know that canceling things just endlessly will do anything. And if, if somebody could explain to me that that would help, I would be all in. Because I don't want anybody to be sick. But I haven't heard one thing from anybody, not any, po you know, any politician, who could tell me that what we're going to do is going to help. So far, we have the least amount of affected people in the world. Um, we've had the least of amount of people that have passed from it. Almost all of the people that have been affected and have passed all have either asthma or they've had some sort of illness that they've suffering from, and they shouldn't be out in the first place in, in this type of environment. But we've had SARS, we've had bird flu, we've had every two years we have some sort of disease that's going to kill us. And I do believe that this has been blown way out of proportion. Um, I don't know if, if Italy, by shutting down all of Italy, helps. Nobody's come back with any facts to say, hey, you know, if we do this, this will work. We don't have a cure for it, but it also I'm, I'm getting to see people who have actually had the disease and they've bounced back. You know, we have cruise ships that are coming in with people that have been affected and they're now well. It's not like they're wheeling them off in caskets. So I just think that we're kind of jumping the gun with making major decisions that are going to be financially more severe than what we're actually doing for safety. So, and I, and I, like I said, I don't envy your decision making on this. 
Um, if it was up to me, this is an outdoor event. You know, as I heard earlier, um, you shouldn't have then the schools open. You know, we should just close down everything and everybody should stay in the house. It's not possible. People get sick, people handle money, people have to eat. We have to live. You know, if we're gonna make it such a, a crazy event, then uh, we shouldn't have this meeting here. So, I, like I said, I, I would vote to keep it open and make sure that we make sure that people that are ill or shouldn't be there shouldn't be there. So, thank, thank you. you very much. Any other comments? I would have been here. I would have been here a little earlier, but I drove down from Northern Ohio to come to this art event here. Okay, mm -hmm. two days of solid driving, a lot of money and gas, and a lot of wear and tear on this 69-year-old body. <clears throat> I think the germiest place in your town. Excuse me, sir, would you please state your name again? Oh, I'm sorry, my name is Tom Ratka, R-A-D-C-A. -A. I'm a ceramic artist from Northern Ohio. Thank you. <clears throat> um, I think the germiest place in any city are restaurants. If you're going to cut down, take, t take away an outdoor art festival, in a restaurant, you're touching all, everything. Everybody is touching everything, right? Can I get it right? Um, it's just, what you don't understand <clears throat> is that those of us who are, uh, so, so would you even remotely consider shutting down all the restaurants for the next three, four, five weeks? I live out in the middle of Amish community, Ohio. Hardly anybody there. May I ask, are these all voted on positions here that you have? Okay. How long do you think you would have your position if you shut down all the restaurants in this town? But the thing about closing down art festivals, it really, when you think about it, it is a win-win for the city. Keep the booth fees and don't have to pay employees overtime, right? Is there a lot of overtime going out this weekend that the city will pay their employees? Anybody can answer yes or no? Sir, just make a comment. There's no questions and answers. Okay, so, I mean, it's, you'll be cutting a whole lot of people off at the financial knees if you do this, and I don't think you're going to be saving anybody from getting this virus. Close down the movie theaters, close down the restaurants, close down everything. And then I say, yeah, we'll take a hit at the art fair scene also. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other comments? Tarpon Springs Chamber of Commerce. Um, I respect your um, comments. I understand completely. I have a background in biochemistry, so I know about viruses and transfers and all of that. But um, the hysteria is the one thing that has me really concerned. The Mark, I sent you and, and uh, a couple of other people this letter from um, the Florida Chamber of Commerce, Mark Wilson who urges Floridians and visitors to follow the facts, be conscious, cautious, but not fearful when it comes to the coronavirus. The Florida Chamber is the official state chapter of the National Safety Council and are committed to keeping Florida safe. The safety of their collective employees is paramount, in, but feels that people deserve the facts. At times like these, it's important to remember that this is a global situation and misinformation and overreacting is causing a secondary impact in our economy. Florida's economy may be creating one in 10 new U.S. jobs, but our economy is in a fragile balance of innovation, trade, tourism, and economic diversification. So let's not panic. There's 20 million people in the state. Look at the numbers. Thousands of folks have been planning to come to this show. As visitors, we have 200 artists that are on their way or already here. Um, they make their living at fine events like our Fine Arts Festival. The chamber has installed eight hand washing stations at various sites on the grounds. Also have recommended that artists um, have hand sanitizers at their booths. We have gloves for the volunteers at the gate who will be handling money and in contact with the public. Um, the businesses in town are going to be the big losers on this. Um, most of our um, people are volunteers that have come to this. We've only lost two artists due to the coronavirus. 
So um, we had a long waiting list, people who were really, really dying to come to this. Um, I won't get into any of the numbers and the economic impact of this, but um, just the panic has got me very concerned. Thank you. Thank you. Any other, any other comments? <clears throat> Miller um, at 1116 Sunset Ridge Lane here in Tarpon. And I've been in Tarpon for a long time. I've never stood up here and talked to anybody before about any issues. So if you can bear with me. First of all, I've never seen this country stick its head in the sand and think everything's going to go away. And that's what they're doing out there. They're, everybody is panicking over stuff that they shouldn't be panicking over. There's things in, uh, that you can do, things you can protect yourself with. If you don't know you have it and you have a disease, you could be anywhere in this world. We're, sh we're shutting down, you're talking about shutting down a, a function that brings a lot of people to this city. Not just this function, but the other ones that we're talking about throughout the month um, brings in tourists from all over, brings people from all over the country and probably other countries at times to show their goods and, and, and see if they can continue to make a living being an, an artist that they are. They, uh, you, you know, you, you, like they were saying, you got movie theaters, you got restaurants. We're all going to these all the time. Every day, every week, we're gonna be someplace where there's a lot of people. And, and stopping something like this is not gonna change the fact that that virus is still here. There, this virus was, was predicted, I think, I don't know the exact date, back in the 1900, late 1900s, by an, art, uh, by an author that said that there, around 2020, there's gonna be a pneumonia-like disease that comes through and, let me read it. Be easier if I read it and try to remember it all. It says, in around 2020, a severe pneumonia-like illness will spread throughout the, the globe, attacking the lungs and the bronchial tubes and resisting any known, all known treatments. Almost more baffling than the illness itself will be the fact that it will suddenly vanish as, as quickly as it arrived again and attack again 10 years later and then disappear completely. It's, you know, this was, this was, a, 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 this was a, probably crazy, but this is a psychic that predicted this in a book that she wrote. I just, I just don't think that we need to run and hide. It's, it's always been against my way of doing things. I never run and hide. I don't think we should run and hide. I think we're here, let's have, a, let's, let's do what we're supposed to be doing for our community. You take away from the, the arts and crafts show, you take away uh, first night or Friday, first Friday nights, you take away the night in the islands, any of the other events that you take away, it's costing the city drastically. It's hurting people. And if you care about the people in the city, I, I, I would recommend you don't do that. That's just kind of where I stand with it. Thank you very much. Any other comments? Not again. You already have, please. Do we have any other comments? Hi everyone, Tracy Swade, 200 East Tarpon Avenue. Um, I'm kind of unprepared to really make a complete statement, public safety being number one, but has been pointed out by a lot of folks, I do think being an outdoor event and the measures that the city chamber, sorry, are taking with gloves and money and hand washing, and especially being an outdoor event, should be taken in consideration, highly consideration, because again, movie theaters, indoor events, where things are not outside, they should be considered more primarily than an outdoor event like the Art Fest. So if I have any vote on this, I would say to keep it going. Thank you. Thank you. 
Any other public comments? Do we have any other public comments on this item? Here none. Back here to the commission for additional discussion. First, I'd like to say that everybody to understand that uh, everyone here on the Board of Commissioners, we do support our business community. This is clear. We prove that always, <clears throat> and we're going to continue doing that. Um, and I understand the finance impact is going to have to the chamber and to the local businesses, but we do not promote in any fear. And I feel very bad for the artist that he came all the way from Ohio to display his work here in Tarpa Springs. But I'd like to emphasize again what I said earlier. We, as elector officials, our main responsibility is and always will be the safety and the welfare of the people. And I cannot deviate from that. Well, I have to do what is going to provide safety to the people of Tarpa Springs. I know gloves are going to be there, but very, not too many people know anything about this. Actually, I don't think anybody knows too much about this disease and for us to be prepared. I don't want Tarpa Springs to be the first seat of Tarpa Springs that everybody's going to look and say, we made a mistake because we allowed this event to happen. Every other state, every other city, every other county is taking these precautions. So I'm not going to take that lightly. Thank you. Vice Mayor, do you have any other comments? Yeah, I'll just touch on a few things, Mayor, um, especially as it relates to the <coughs> idea of fear. Um, you know, I mean, to echo on some of the things that the mayor said, I mean, the idea of fear for me, if we just look at, like, the facts, which a lot of people talked about, I mean, what's factual is this is classified as a global pandemic. What's factual is countries are shutting down. What's factual is uh, hospitals are on lockdown, store shelves are empty. I mean, is there some fear-mongering going on to a degree? Maybe, but I can tell you that the people who are making these decisions to classify this as a global pandemic or shutting down countries, lock, hospitals on lockdown, they know a lot more about it than I do. So those are, I'm going to lean on the scientists, I'm going to lean on the, the countries who have the resources to try and, you know, make these decisions and offer uh, advice as it relates to public safety, and I'm going to try and follow their lead. Um, I can tell you that from a uh, economic standpoint, my opinion would be that the the economic impacts of hosting this event and uh, a coronavirus case being brought up or a product of the event is going to have a lot bigger lasting economic impact on the community than uh, mm -hmm. postponing the event. So that's kind of my position. Um, you know, we talked about if you're, you know, older or you're susceptible to the disease, you shouldn't come out. The guy who boarded the plane today in uh, New York City who infected the whole plane that got off on uh, in Panama, or no, not Panama, but uh, Palm Beach, you know, he should have taken some self-responsibility. He shouldn't have got on the plane. But, you know, as a result of that, the whole plane was quarantined for 14 days. So, I mean, you know, as a whole, we should all take some self-responsibility. But there's also people out there who aren't willing to do that. And uh, we, have to, we have to look at them uh, holistically. Um, I do think that it's a good idea, since we already have a scheduled uh, Board of Commissioners meeting on the 24th, to, take, to revisit this issue then. And like I said, hopefully there will be a positive outcome and the cases will dwindle. Um, we don't know that to be true. There's a, there's a strong possibility that it won't. But you know, at, at a minimum, that will save some of our April events, which I think are important to the community. So you know, we're, we're doing the best we can, but I don't think it's smart to <coughs> proceed with, with this event. Thanks, thanks, Mayor. Um, I, I think uh, Vice Mayor hit the nail on the head is self-responsibility. Um, a lot of times you see um, individuals that will go out when they're sick um, and will go out to the stores, will go to work, will go to school. And that aspect is an area that I have great concern about. Um, and there's a couple things I want to bring up, and this is out of off the Mayo Clinic's uh, website. And it talks about you may show signs from two days to 14 days of having the virus. Um, so you have the virus and you don't know it and you're out and about in a crowd and yes it's an outdoor event 
but I'm well aware I've grew up on the bayou. I know what this event's like. You're shoulder to shoulder. It's not like a, on a giant field where there's plenty of space in between vendors. Um, you're shoulder to shoulder. You're walking right next to each other. Someone's breathing. You're feeling it on the back of your neck. Um, is this something I'm excited to say, yeah, let's go ahead and uh, postpone the event? No, it's not. Um, but something I am excited about is I'm going to stand up for what I feel is right for our residents. And so with that, it, I still feel like this is the, the best thing to go. Um, and I think it's the best idea to postpone everything through the end of March, and then we could hold off for the April events as well. And talking about fear, this isn't a, a fear statement. It's just cautiously aware of the environment that we're in today. Um, uh, we saw the virus that was in China a couple weeks ago. Now we've seen how fast it's moved across the United or across the world, and now it's in our backyard in Pinellas County. So we don't know what this is going to look like in two weeks from now. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, it says, well, if we didn't take a stand, and the mayor said it very great, I, I believe. Um, we don't want to look back and said, yeah, we should have canceled this because look, someone did have this, and now look what the ramifications are on this. Is it going to say? I think Mr. Eisner brought it up. Um, is it going to say that we're guaranteeing that there's not going to be any viruses here? No, but this is a, a, a an, op an opportunity to say, you know what, this is a great risk for public safety and public health. So at that point, I feel like we still have to move forward and postpone these events until the end of March. Commissioner Siebel. Yes, uh, I understand what my colleagues are saying, and I'm not uh, not aware of the safety of our residents of Tarpon Springs. Um, I do, that is very important to me. I just feel like some of them, uh, of our um, uh, citizens have said that we don't have enough information. We don't have enough data to make that kind of a decision. And this event is not going to be postponed. It's gonna be canceled. Uh, there's no way it can be, it can come back a month later. Um, and I don't know what the repercussions are gonna be to the chamber, but uh, again, I feel that this event is not going to change anything. Um, you know, maybe we should talk about the other events. Uh, Dunedin is not canceling any of their events, and they're seven miles away from here. So, um, you know, I, I just feel that we're making decisions not based on scientific knowledge and, and data, uh, and we're just panicking. Uh, so I, I don't want that to happen. I want us to be sure of what we're saying and what we're deciding. And I'm not at all thinking that I don't care about our residents or, or their health. Uh, I just don't think we have the information. And they have taken a lot of precautions, so I feel like thank you for, for saying that. Commissioner Dowd. Thank you, Mayor. Um, yeah, again, I appreciate everybody coming out tonight and voicing their comments, and I'm gonna try to make sure that everybody's <laughs> concerns uh, get addressed, or at least I, I can do my best to address them. Uh, as far as not having enough information on this, I, I think nothing could be farther from the truth. I think we have the information that it's a global pandemic. We have the total amount of cases and over 1,200. We have the total amount of deaths. Um, we know that somebody in Pasco was affected today. I mean, as we, as we get more information throughout this, obviously we're gonna be able to handle it better, but I think at the moment we have enough information to make a qualified decision. Um, also, again, I wanna reiterate that it's not about fear. It's about mitigating risk. Right, so there's, there's no guarantee that when I get in my car and I put my seatbelt on that I'm not gonna get in a car accident and hurt myself or die, but at the same time I'm gonna do it because it's mitigating risk, right? Every day, you know, you wake up, you take your vitamins, are those gonna guarantee that you're healthy? Maybe not, but you're gonna take them. I think we owe it to our residents and, and to the people that elected us to make sure that they're safe in this situation and take every uh, precaution that's necessary. And also, I think it's a bit of a slippery slope um, to equate, you know, closing down private businesses, closing down City Hall and stuff like that to postponing these mass gatherings because these are mass events being held on city property. Um, so th that's my opinion. Um, Mayor, are there any other comments? Because I can make a motion on this. Yeah, we agree for motion. Okay. I would motion to postpone all events in March and readdress the status of the coronavirus at the regular session on the 24th. Second that. Commissioner Donovan? Yes. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Commissioner Sieber? No. Vice Mayor Terrapin? Yes. Mayor Lahizis? Yes, thank you. The next item on the agenda is a discussion coronavirus development <coughs> and issues.
Again, one of the main reasons I added a second item because things were going so fast today, I didn't know what else would be on there. But I want to take the opportunity to have Scott Young come up and just do a real brief explanation of what's been going on and the <laughs> universal numbers of this county. This is not a city thing, looking for city. We've got a countywide emergency management system that provides the information. So kind of the short version, bring us through all we've been working on the last two weeks, where all the information is available is for us, and let the citizens know since we're filming tonight because we want people who not be able to get out in the short notice to see that. Um, so if you could give a, an update, and of course he'll be back again, we'll have somebody back again um, the 24th to give where we are there. Sure, thank you. Uh, so far in the county, there's been two uh, positive cases in the county. Uh, they've been travel-related cases so far. Uh, the county is uh, monitoring other people within the county at this time. Uh, I don't have that exact number because it keeps changing. Last I heard, it was about 100 and some people just being monitored in the county uh, that have been exposed uh, to people that may have been uh, affected. Uh, the, the emergency management has been working with their community partners along with the, the uh, county emergency management and the Department of Health. Uh, we've been uh, having meetings, conference calls uh, on the, the issue of what's to be done. Uh, the medical director for the county has changed our system as far as uh, how we respond to patients in the county a little bit. Uh, so we, we're monitoring that and it's very fluid. Uh, as the situation changes, we will change with it to make sure we are protecting our citizens and our staff, uh, police and fire. And uh, we, the, count, the emergency management has been holding meetings with uh, some of the department heads today also on what we need to be prepared for as far as the city, uh, what we could be seeing as far as the city uh, uh, moving forward as far as uh, members of the uh, city employees, what we need to do with them in case of, uh, this starts going uh, big on us. Uh, we also are looking at uh, the future and what potential needs we're going to need to take place, uh, even with greater social distancing uh, for our people. Uh, we need to take that into account. Uh, we're trying to make sure that all everything that we do aligns with the CDC requirements and guidelines, along with the uh, Florida Department of Health. Uh, environmental procedures uh, have been uh, enhanced within the city. Uh, all of our city buildings, uh, where the public comes in and out, we're trying to make sure we enhanced our cleaning procedures and what we are doing to uh, protect them in that area. We, uh, our EM, like I said, our EMS services are prescribed, are following all the prescribed protocols from the medical director's office and Dr. Cho from the health department. Uh, Non-essential training and meetings are being looked at on a case-by-case -case basis, uh, but we recognize that the city of Tarpon Springs is a destination uh, for some, and we're preparing for the uncertain future while we're doing everything we can to reduce the impact to our responders and our citizens right now. That's pretty much in a nutshell what we've been doing. Uh, we're following it day by day. Uh, emails are going back and forth at a rapid pace, especially today on what's going on, and we'll keep you uh, up to date when we get these uh, situational reports. You probably saw the one I sent out yesterday. Uh, as we get those, we will send those out to everybody so we'll, you all are informed of what we know. I'll ask any questions I can. Chief, thank you very much. Thank you for representing the city of Tarpon Springs down to county. Uh, first question that I have, I think will be for Mr. LeCourtis, uh, is the information on the city website so people can able to access it? Yes, it is. Thank you. Uh, Chief Young, our hospital has been involved with the uh, the uh, emergency the management uh, people getting. at the county are holding uh, meetings with the uh, hospitals, uh, conference calls, and letting them know uh, what's going on. Also, getting information from them on what they are doing, so we know as first responders what we're dealing with uh, in the public. Do you know when we're going to be getting the test kits in the area? That I do not know. I have no idea about that yet. That has not been relayed to us. I think they're waiting, and once we find out that information, we'll pass it along. Uh, we have two cases in Pinellas County. Yes. They're not in Tarpon, right? Uh, they haven't given us the location. They just said that there are positive cases. Good. So. so I can sleep better. Um, and you, you say you, we, we do have 120 people. The last right number now. I heard was about 120 people being monitored. 
When they say monitored, that just means they're being supervised by health officials to see if they start exhibiting any symptoms before they start going for testing. Once they, if they test people, how that works, it goes over to Tampa for testing. If it comes back to positive there, then it's sent off to the CDC for additional testing. The whole testing procedure takes up to 72 hours for results. Okay. When they are monitored, they are in a control environment or? They, a lot of them will be just uh, uh, quarantined or however at home, most of them. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Vice Mayor Serafini. Any questions? I don't have many questions for the chief. I just uh, am a, um, have a little concern um, with the clerk's office in terms of the exchanging of money and the bill collection and stuff. So I just want to make sure that we have, you know, obviously have as many resources available to not only all of our staff but also the public. But being that they do, you know, exchange money and collect bills on a daily basis throughout the course of the day, I just want to make sure. Irene, that you have what you need as far as we have to you know, take extra precautions, and, and we not only the clerk's office but all of our offsite uh, collection areas. Great. Okay. That's all I have. Uh, you have mentioned, Mr. Liquor, that uh, our employees are in the field. You have taken special precautions. What do you provide them? Any special gloves, materials, or what for them to work? Well, whatever they need, depending on the circumstances, we're involved with manning the people now of the different the needs of what they need and stuff. So that's going to be ongoing every day as we, as we go along. Okay. Okay. Commission Carr. No. Commission Sieber. Yeah, just on, on what you just asked, uh, Mayor, uh, we do have departments who see people from outside. Um, so as like planning and zoning and development services uh, get people from all over coming into the, the city hall. So how are you planning to keep our employees safe there? Through all these processes, we are trying like we do in, in efforts such as this and disaster and stuff. We're trying to take it from a countywide approach. So all cities are discussing those different options like you see, I know you mentioned about Dundee and not canceling and things, but that was as of yet. You'll probably see at Oldsmar cancel their events for the weekend and other people. We will watch as the county and as they talk about the different <laughs> efforts. And as we talk as a county and all cities together, obviously we got a lot of cities. We are going to try to do these things as cities together as far as limited access to City Hall, um, doing things by, uh, I mean, all departments are looking. For instance, um, Kevin Powell in, um, in building is already setting up a process of being able to do video inspections um, for their area. So every area is looking within there to look at what they could do to make the employees and the people safety um, thing. If it comes to the cities and we see cities start to limit access and stuff, then then we're going to do it. But we're trying to do it so it's not you know Oldsmar does this, this city doesn't do this, Dunedin. Um, it's not going to be all collectives because we've got some cities that will go on a tangent, but we are looking at those every day and examining them and looking at as, as a countywide, as cities, what, what steps we take and do it in a real methodical, talking manner of, of doing things and kind of move progressively as, as the facts and stuff dictate. So the, I can tell you those decisions may be coming soon uh, uh, to do some of those things, but they're not there yet. But this thing's moving so fast, it might be something you'll be getting notice on tomorrow or Monday and stuff. That's how fast these things are moving. And we're going to try to move, you know, as, as a county unified and cities unified um, to make these type of decisions, especially because they affect the residents and they affect operations. But everybody is also working a way if these steps are taken, how can we still serve the citizens? How can we still get permits done? How can they? course of business, whether we set up video calls. So, so every aspect of the technology that we have <clears throat> available, um, all, all laptops are ready if we get a situation where employees have to work out of the home to do things. Um, every contingency is being looked at and worked on to handle, um, again, methodically as the evidence comes in, as we see what people's doing. Um, every department's major function every day is to be preparing for if this steps up and the steps get different, how do we do our job and still be able to serve the citizens with what we're supposed to do with the most amount of protection for those citizens and the employees here. And of course, we've got an emergency management team with the chief and the people that's involved in it. We've seen our emergency management team in storms and 
you know, we'll put our emergency management team against anyone's. Um, they're all long experience. We've all been through this a long time. So um, we're going to be at, we'll be at the forefront in preparing. And again, we're, we look and we've been looking for two. We've already been talking about it the past two weeks. What are the contingency with this thing? How can it spread? What steps to make? Make sure these laptops we we're going to get rid of, save them because we might have to issue them. And and uh, our IT person set up so people can do things. So we've been getting things ready, and we always look at worst case scenarios. So we're getting ready for worst case scenario. That's how you operate. And but you don't go to worst case scenario. There's a methodical method. You do it. So it's not this hysteria that people are talking about. And it's going to be very methodical. It's going to be talked out within a, a lot of people involved in a lot of emergency management stuff in the county before the decisions that's going to be made. And, and again, every step of the way from now forward, you'll be getting everything that comes out, everything that goes. They'll be going on the website, and they'll be and they'll be directed to you and whatever distribution that we have within the city. So the, the website will be moving and current. Probably check it every hour because some of these things are coming up hourly. So if we get something from somewhere, it'll it'll go up on the website, and we'll let people know periodically from Facebook. Look, there's more information up on the on the website. Go to it, and we'll be keeping it up to date and current. I had one other question. Mm -hmm. Uh, I talked about the library <coughs> earlier. Uh, we have a lot of people going to the library. We have plastic tables, laptops, uh, where you know anything could be transmitted. We have out-of-staters coming here. We have homeless. Uh, so, wh what do you feel about the library? Do you think it's it's going to be okay? Well, again, they've got a countywide library, so we're going to see what 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 goes on. I'm sure those meetings are going to be taking place tomorrow and Monday. I mean, they're going to be taking care of fast. What is what is the library co -op, What are they talking about with library stuff? Right now, we can take extra precautions of sanitizing and that sort of thing, but um, we're going to, you know, that's something we're going to going to be looking at, and that decisions uh, has it's made by other places, and if the collaborative effort of of the libraries in this county and dealing with emergency management says we should close or restrict, do something, then then we'll be letting you know that that looks like the countywide efforts of it. But all those conversations are going to be happening tomorrow, Monday, through the weekend probably. We'll be all ready, have our phones ready during the weekend. Again, we'll get them to you as, as fast as, as we get them. Thank you, Mayor. Um, yeah, I just wanted to see if, if we get a, a general consensus, and I think that's the plan already, but just so that we're using Facebook to reach out to our residents and just, even if it's just once a day where we're giving them a link to like what the CDC <laughs> is currently recommending, and even if it's just, hey, we're currently monitoring the situation, we're meeting with the Pinellas County, um, I just think it's good to, to keep them in, con in contact because, you know, a, a lot of times that, that fear and that panic comes from just things that people don't understand. So I think as many links to information and what we're doing to handle it, I think that that would be the better. Yes. Okay. I agree. Um, and then have you been in contact with any representatives from the youth leagues? Because I've talked to a few of them. Um, Tom, Fine, I didn't get a chance to talk to him before, but he said he, he has talked to some of them and... Uh, I think one of them was looking at what the, the organization, the kind of organization was yeah. doing, and we're supposed to get back with them in the morning okay. and see if we got any new information and stuff. I think both, I think he's kind of there, both football and, and baseball, and we've left it where we're seeing what they do as a as an organization, because all these organizations, such as Psy, they're dealing with these same issues we're dealing with as these mm -hmm. things progress. So our, our intention when I talked to them right before this meeting start was to, to get back with them in the morning and start the talks of what where they're looking at from their league and their aspects and what we have to look at from the city and the safety aspect. Okay. Yeah, that, that's pretty much what I heard as well, is that their own nonprofit regional or state program is mm -hmm. looking into it. They're going to yeah. have more information tomorrow, so it's more like a wait and see on that. Um, one thing I did just, I, I just wanted to check, so like, you know, if, the, if they end up canceling their season or something like that or postponing their season, will we, we'll still keep those parks open, right? So like if I want to take a jog around Discovery or something like that, yes. I can, I, okay. Yes, I don't see that, I don't see it getting to that stage, I mean, <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, you don't know, but I don't see that, but the leagues and the group stopping, but somebody taking their son out to hit some balls and get ready for the see the father okay. taking the son out to hit some balls and wait for the season to start back up again. I don't think we'd get to the point. I don't think we'd get to the point of yeah, the place I, I, doing I, that. Not, again, it would be a last minute where everybody else is making the, and completely closing down fields that I'd be bringing, hey, the consensus is everybody would do it, but I okay. hope it doesn't get to that. That would be last resort. Yeah, I just, I just wanted to be clear. All right, cool, thanks. Thank you, Chief Young. Thank you.
We now go into the public comments. Ms. Kalakis, you had a question to ask? I mean, you had a comment to make. Okay? Thank you. Yes. Mike Eisner, 1515 15, Riverside Drive. Uh, I did want to share with you something that I'm, I'm sure some of you know. I have a, I am a retired mold remediation specialist. So what I was speaking about before when I was up here, um, I have a good knowledge of bacteria. I've dealt with it all my life. And uh, I didn't want to come up here and single anything out. But did anybody sanitize your desks before you got to sit down at it? Yes, they did. Excellent. So my next question would be, and I'm not looking to be a, a smart aleck like I normally am, <laughs> but I would like to say, while I'm sitting here, my OCD also tells me we've had, and I won't point out each one who's done it, but somebody scratched their face, somebody touched this and scratched this, and you know what I'm saying? It's like at what point, and I won't point out any fingers, but everybody that's been up here has touched this. And Chief, while he was sitting up here, he's going like this. So, you know, at what point, and I, and I have to go back to what I was originally saying, where do we draw the line? Should we have somebody here sterilizing these two things in between? Is everybody gonna touch that doorknob going out? You know, that, that's what I'm trying to point out. Uh, whether, whether we take every precaution that we do, we're still gonna have this coronavirus. And yes, we're trying to keep it to a minimum. But I, I just think the word fear was used as fear. But when we start shutting things down and stop living, that's fear. It's making people that have anxiety have more anxiety. And those people are the ones that are asking who's paying for my anxiety pills. So I, I just say take a deep breath and let's not get crazy on shutting things down before we really give it some thought. That's all I want to share. And thank you. I, thank you. And I didn't point out who did what here, just in case you're curious. And don't scratch yourself again. <laughs> <laughs> Any other public comments? Thank you. Any, any commission comments? Well, I want to thank you again for being here tonight and share your ideas with us. This is a very, very critical, very, very important meeting that we had tonight. It was a very difficult decision that we had to make. But well, that concludes the meeting, and it's adjourned at 8.22 p.m.